In Creole Parametric, the chamfer command is most often used to break sharp edges, remove non-structural mass, and create counterbores on holes that don't have them. In this video, we're going to take a look at the different ways you can select references, the different dimensioning schemes, and the options tab. To create a chamfer, you can use the chamfer command in the ribbon on the model tab. Also, you can start off by selecting an edge that you want to chamfer, for example, for this hole. And we have from the mini toolbar, the edge chamfer command. And there we can see the value that's being created. And you can double click on the dimension if you want to change it to a different number. Let's take a look at the interface. Right now we are in sets mode. A single chamfer feature can contain multiple sets of references. That's something I will take a look at in a moment. From this drop down list, we have our different dimensioning schemes. And you can see that there are six of them here. And since we're using the D by D dimensioning scheme, here we have the value for the distance that the chamfer is being created. And there are a few different tabs in here. We have the sets tab. And right now we're working on set number one. It's just got this single reference. Here we have our value for the dimension. And instead of value, you could use a reference like a datum point or a curve to drive the size of the feature. And from the drop down list, we have the ability to choose the distance the way that the distance is calculated. The default is offset surfaces, but you could also use tangent surface if that becomes a factor. We have the transitions tab. So if you have multiple sets that intersect each other, you can go into transition mode and control the interaction of the geometry there. Let's go back to sets mode. Also, you have different pieces that you can choose whether to include or not. And transitions and pieces is something that we'll take a look at in part two. The options tab we'll take a look at later, so you can generate a chamfer as a non-solid feature if possible. And the properties tab is where you can change the name. But let's go back over here. I'm going to leave the sets tab open. I don't need my model tree. Let's collapse it, just make it a little easier to see. And right now I've just got one edge selected. If you hold down the control key, you can add additional edges to that particular set. And the advantage of using multiple edges in the same set is that they'll all be controlled by a single dimension value. If you select an edge and you don't want it in the set, just hold down the control key and select it again. If I don't hold down the control key when I'm selecting my different references, I'm actually getting a new set in here. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see new users make when they are creating rounds or chamfers. They don't hold down the control key when picking multiple references. So they get multiple sets and they're all driven by different dimensions when usually you want them to be driven by the same dimension. So if I don't want this set, I will right click on it and choose delete. And then I can use the control key again to add that particular edge into this set. So that is good for the chamfer feature for this one. I could hit the check mark. I'll show you again how to create other additional sets. When you're still in the command here, you just select the edge that you want to chamfer. And there we can see the value and we can drag this out. And because this is in a different set, I have the ability to have a different value versus the other edges that are in here. And in addition to that, one of the nice things about having multiple sets is that it helps reduce clutter in the model tree. Let's take a look at the other ways of selecting various references. So right now I have just an edge selected. I'm going to right click and remove that. I highly recommend when you can to use what are called intent references. And intent references are a more stable way of selecting references. Rather than using the control key and picking the four vertical edges on the outside of this feature, if I tap the right mouse button, I can get what are called the intent edges, which you can see from the pop-up menu. So this way I'm grabbing the edges associated with this particular feature. In this case, it's recognizing it as a protrusion. And that way, if the shape of that feature ever changes, it'll automatically update the edges that are being used here. So intent edges, I find to be very, very helpful. 
All right, let us hit the check mark for now, and we'll go back later on and change the dimensioning scheme. Some of the other different ways in which you can define your chamfers is if you go into the chamfer feature, rather than picking individual edges, you can have it go from a an surface to an edge and also from a surface to a surface. For example, I'm going to select this surface over here, hold down the control key and pick that particular edge. And in this case, let me drag it down a little bit. Here you can see the chamfer that is being created. If I go to the drop down list, you'll notice that my dimension schemes that are available are O by O and O1 by O2. I'll go into O versus D in a moment. So that is one way of creating, again, I'm creating from a surface to an edge, and it has to be selected in that order, a surface to an edge. Another way is creating it from a surface. I'll select this surface over here, hold down the control key and select another surface. And again, as the, as the name implies, that is a surface to surface selection. And a surface to surface selection a lot of times can be more stable than just selecting individual edges. One thing I want to point out with both of these sets, you'll notice that even though I selected this surface and this surface or this surface and an individual edge, the chamfer automatically gets propagated to all tangent references. So this one is good. Let us hit the check mark and let's edit definition of the original chamfer in order to show some of the different dimensioning schemes. So if I go to the drop down list right now, set one is active and that is that counter board that I created. I have, the, I have all six different dimensioning schemes available. The first one I'm gonna talk about is 45 by D and 45 by D has a very specific requirement. 45 by D can only be used when the two surfaces that form the edge are at a 90 degree angle to one another. So again, it's got that 90 degree angle requirement. If you don't have both of your surfaces at a 90 degree angle, then instead of 45 by D, you can use D by D. And it's going to just measure that distance D back along both of the surfaces. So the D options measures the distance along the surfaces that form the edge that you are chamfering. Besides D by D, you have this option for D1 by D2. And in this particular case, now I get different dimensions for the chamfer distances. So for example, maybe I want it to only be 0.1 in one direction, and in the other direction, I'll change it to a value of 0.3. And in this particular case, if you take a look in the tab on the ribbon, you can see the two dimensions here. Also, I've got an additional field for the dimension on the ribbon. Also, there is a flip button if you wanna change which side is the one side and which one is the two side. So again, you can see what happens when I flip there. Another option that you have in this particular case, the fourth one that we'll take a look at, is angle by D. So angle by D is going to be some distance back along the edge at a particular angle. And similarly, we can flip it in this case over here. And I'd wanna flip in this case, so let's say that I am trying to do a counter bore and I want this to be at 82 degrees. This is probably gonna be way too big. Oh, yeah, it's way too big. Let me change this down to smaller value. If the preview goes away, you can tell when you're trying to make it way too big. Let me just use a small value in this case over here for that, yeah. Really, really small in this particular case. Let me go a little bigger. So for again, if I wanted to do that real countersink at 82 degrees, oh, let's flip it. it. Just looks terrible. So again, if you're trying to do it at non 45 degree angles uh, in your model, and again, you have the different drag handles. You are not limited to just uh, double clicking on the dimensions and entering different values. You can drag if you're trying to eyeball it out to the value that you want. But let's go back over here and change this to 30. So those are the, for the sort of like the more obvious dimensioning schemes, but then we have this O by O and O1 by O2. And I'll be honest, when I used to 
teach this material in classes. I hated discussing O by O and O1 by O2 because it can be really, really confusing. But probably the easiest way of understanding it is that I mentioned that 45 by D has that restriction that you can only use it when you have a 90 degree angle between your different surfaces. Probably the easiest way to understand uh, when you're using the D options instead is that the D options are available when you have an, a constant angle along the edge references that's other than 90 degrees. Uh, 45 by D is available when it's 90 degrees, but the D by D, D1 by D2, and D by angle, those are used when you have a situation in which the angle between the surfaces that form the edge is not 90 degrees, but the angle is constant. The big difference with the O by O is when the angle between the surfaces that form the edges is not constant. So for example, I've taken an ellipse and I've extruded it and then I sliced it at an angle with the datum plane. So if you take a look at the angle between this surface and this surface over here, as it's created, the angle is not constant. So if I try to chamfer the edge here, I'll select the edge and then choose edge chamfer from the mini toolbar. From the drop down list, I only have two different options, O by O and O1 by O2. And so it's measuring this particular dimension, which I will, well, let's make it bigger. It's measuring this distance by offsetting along the surface rather than going uh, directly along the surface that you are using. And the difference between O by O and O1 by O2 is the same as the difference between D by D and D1 by D2. This is going to give you a separate dimension to control along both of the surfaces. And Last thing to mention for this part one is the options tab. So on the options tab here, by default, if you are creating a chamfer on solid geometry, it's going to give you a solid feature. And by the way, the chamfer can either add or remove material. It is removing material in this particular edge, but if, uh, in the previous model, let me hit the check mark and jump back to it real quick. You'll notice that in this particular case, it added material because of the angle between the surfaces. Uh, it's what's called a reentrant corner. But let's go back over here, select my chamfer, edit definition. Again, by default, it is gonna generate it as a solid feature, which either adds or removes material when you are generating this feature on solid geometry. If this particular part was non-solid, then the chamfer feature would be generated as a surface. But I have the option in here in my solid model to generate this chamfer feature as a surface feature. So we just generate a surface in here. In this particular case, it's not relevant, but you do have an option to cap the ends of the chamfer uh, as necessary. Uh, but again, since this goes in a loop, it really doesn't have a difference. So in this case here, you can see if I query select here is the surface feature that is generated at the chamfer, but it is a non-solid feature. Please join us for part two when we will go into transitions and pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.